of us, not all, but some of us take help for granted. Some of us, how many here can do a sit-up? Just one sit-up. A lot of people. Now, kids with prune belly syndrome can't even do one due to the fact that they don't have any of their abdominal muscles. Um, according to PBSN, which is Prune Belly Syndrome Network, Prune Belly Syndrome is a very rare syndrome that affects one out of, out of every 40,000 births in the United States. Now, nobody here has ever heard of it before, right? Everyone's like, what is this? You're weird. Well, uh, how, and then how do I know it? Truth is, I have it. And people don't know about it, and people are like, oh, it's really weird. Not many people know about it because of the fact it's not really something you go tell people, hey, I have proof about it. Because they just know what it is. So, but in my story is, my, my parents, when they found out, the doctors told them just the boredom through the fact that gonna, he's going to die in either a couple of days or in a couple of years. Because according to Medline Plus, 30% no, of prune belly syndrome patients die within the first two years of life due to renal, renal failure, mm. which is you know, part of the whole coming thing. Now, in this whole speech, I want to give you guys a glimpse of what prune belly syndrome is, some of the causes, and what treatments there are available. Now, Prevalence syndrome was, it's a very, it's very hard to find things on it. But what you can find it is that in, in 1839, a Canadian physician by the name of William Oster was one of the people who found it and gave it its name. According to BBSN, Prevalence syndrome is characterized by, by two major things. Interior wall deficiency or absence, which is you either have some of your abdominal walls, or you have none of it at all. And uh, irregularity with your urinary tract, which means you have a really large bladder, small bladder, large kidney, one kidney, things like that. Um, also, according to the rare disease section of the website about, there are also other physical conditions that can happen to the patient. For example, a spinal curvature, hip dislocation, club foot, which means your foot is just like that, and even heart problems. But it's not enough to simply know what it is and how it started and how people found, about it, found out about it, but we also want to understand what causes it. Unfortunately, there isn't a reason why it causes it. Nobody knows why, why, why it happens, and nobody has a cure for it. But doctors do have a theory called the primary mesodurnal development defect, which basically is, in a nutshell, it happens between 6 and 10 weeks of the, of the woman's pregnancy. And it, disru it disrupts the development of the lateral plate mesoderm, which is where the abdominal wall is formed. Now, since there, people don't have abdominal wall, I have a friend who I found through the internet, his name is Frank Walker, and when he was in middle school, he and his friends were walking to down the hall, and some punk, I don't know, just punches him off straight in the gut. Frank, needless to say, fell on the floor, couldn't breathe. They took him to the doctor, um, they, they, they got an x-ray, doctor came back to him and said, listen, your, inter your internal organs are all bruised up, just so you know, straight up, right off the bat. But, you're lucky, because if this guy hit you a little more center, you would have died, because it would hit one of your internal, vital internal organs, and you could have died. So many of the people with prune syndrome have that fear of getting people pun punched and things like that because they can die easier, easier, easy, or whatever. Now, although there's no definite cause, there are two treatments out there. There's one that's very common, which is basically a tummy tuck, for mm -hmm. you know, regular people with tummy tuck. It basically, it does what helps is improves the person's respiratory system so you can breathe better because when you have prune you you're, you're always like crouched over and you can't really breathe well. So you go up, you can smell, you can breathe better, and it also helps the the, the pot-like belly that the kid has, because the kid just has on the wall and the belly is really big. And the other one that's better, but not as common, is called the abdominal wall reconstruction, which basically you just put all you transfer muscles from other parts of your body to your, your stomach, and then you, you, you get an abdominal wall. That was the for, according to PBSN, the first ever abdominal wall reconstruction was on my friend Frank back in 1982 by Dr. Ralph Gerr. Although there are treatments available, not many people are lucky enough to receive them. And having and knowing about Prometheus syndrome is a very important thing to know, because not many people know about it. And, I, and if, God forbid, your kid or your friend or your cousin or your nephew, your niece, you might have it. And by them knowing there are other people out there that have this disease, they don't feel like I did back when I was in middle school, elementary school, even high school, thinking that nobody had it, it was a rare thing that only I, I had. And in my case, it's completely different because I, didn't have, I don't have that problem like Frank did. I have some of my wall, bottom of the walls, I play soccer, I play basketball. I'm not, you know, dying like the doctor said I would. <laughs> and because of that, I feel that 
I'm the person that should go out there and tell people about this disease. Because if people don't know about it, who can help? Because you see, I'm not, not going to say, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean, but you know, AIDS and Parkinson's and things like that, they all have a spokesperson because one person is hurts. One person, is, the, one person that has it is famous. AIDS has Magic Johnson, Parkinson's has Michael J. Fox, and other people. And Proof of doesn't have anybody. And people don't understand that it's, almost, it's as serious as an AIDS or Parkinson's disease. So I, I hope that with this speech, you guys understand a little bit more about Prunelli syndrome. And in the future, if anyone, if anyone ever asks you, do you know somebody that has it? You can say, yes, I know someone. So thank you. <laughs>